This is the Wendy's Saga. This video series will be covering the beloved saga from start to finish, in detail. Working at Wendy's was what Josh was known for, alongside his pipe smoking and gothic bad boy persona. He was proud to work at Wendy's until it was taken away from him after almost five years of service. There are many moving parts to the Wendy's saga, such as Josh's finances and after work habits that played a big role in Josh's inevitable firing. This is the Wendy's saga, part one. In late June, early July 2012, Josh was kicked out of Job Corps for getting caught smoking marijuana on campus by a jacket leader. Josh spent four days in a homeless shelter awaiting a Greyhound bus back to Casper, Wyoming. Josh said that his dad was furious and gave Josh the ultimatum, get a job in two weeks or have his hair cut, which at this point was down to his shoulders. Before Josh went to Job Corps, Josh's dad Clint told him if he gets kicked out of Job Corps, he's going to a group home with other kids with autism. Uh, I can't tell you how many times my parents have said you need to be at home for people with Asperger's or you need to get this, this or that, blah, 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 whatever. And I said, no, okay. I told them, no, I'm, I want to be in a, a group home for people with Asperger's. And like, it's not a bad thing, Josh. I'm like, I know it's not a bad thing, but goddamn it, I want to be independent and make my own life happen because I'm determined to prove to myself that I can be a functioning adult in society despite the fact I dress like this and despite the fact that I have autism. It's overcoming obstacles. On June 27th, Josh posted the following on Facebook. Still job hunting. Can't wait to start working and get an apartment. The two interviews I had today went well. On July 11th, Josh posted on Facebook. I got a job working at Wendy's here in Casper. I start tomorrow at 10 in the morning. I had the interview yesterday at 3.30. Josh's position at Wendy's was a lobby assistant. He did not work with the food. Josh's hourly rate at Wendy's was $8.50. Josh began working mornings and enjoyed the convenience of only having to walk 20 minutes to work from his parents' house. Over the coming weeks, Josh regularly posted pictures on Facebook of alcohol, tobacco and energy drinks that he purchased with his money working at Wendy's. I bought three packs of red Cuban cigar, Zippo flints and fluid for my new Zippo because I lost my old one at Job Corps and some Pinnacle Cotton Candy Vodka and that vodka was good, I bought it on the 18th of last week. Mix all these drinks together and you get swamp water. It's my newest drink combination and it's good. That very same day, Josh posted on Facebook. Cords are gone from my computer. Can't make videos until I get them back. Don't know when that will be, but I will make fucking videos. When I do, I miss making videos and music. LOL. Why are the cords gone from your computer? Pair rinse. Holy shit, new video soon. Sometime in August, Josh uploaded a video to his YouTube channel using Couch Chris's dad's laptop and gave an update to his fans on what was going on in his life. Hey everyone, this is um, Gothic King Cobra with another video and I just want to say a couple things. Right now, I'm borrowing a friend of mine, Chris's dad's computer for this YouTube video. I know, I know a lot of fans of mine have been asking for a new video like legitly asking i mean to the point of where it's just it's pathetic like i i appreciate the fans i get don't get me wrong i really do but some of these people when they ask are being very immature about it and quite frankly i don't care for the immaturity don't get me wrong i love my fans like a brother and sister would okay you know because they're family to me all right lately every time i get on facebook with my shitty cell phone i get people saying things like make a video Okay, this, this right here is my cell phone. This hair does not do shit. I've tried countless of times to get videos to work on this phone. I can record them, I can't upload them. Okay, the course to my dad's computer, or the, the course to my computer, gone. You wanna know why? Because my dad's like, if you're not paying for your electricity, you're part of the electricity, then you don't get to have them. Some people say, then why don't you just buy new cords? Well, see, if I did that, my dad would just take them away and then give me that same lecture. And even if I did pay my share of the electricity, if I didn't have the money, they'd be gone again. So, 
There'd be no point in getting the cords back because if I didn't have the money, I'd be gone off YouTube again. Okay? I know you want a new video, so I'm giving you one. And a special shout out to Chris and his dad. Thank you very much for letting me borrow your computer for making this video. I don't know when I'll be back officially. But rest assured, I will be back. Remember Christmas break at Job Corps? Before I left for Job Corps, I said I'll be back. I came back, didn't I? Because I'm a man of my word. Okay? Now, once I get my own place, I start paying my bills all looking to getting internet. And then, I start making videos again, like I used to. See, right now, I can't even make and finish my fourth CD of the darkness. Oh my god, this CD, people, is going to blow your fucking minds. This CD is my best work so far. It's legit. I got me a new Zippo. I lost it in my Job Corps because it fell in my pocket and no one wanted to return it. Okay? I got kicked out of Job Corps for smoking pot. Okay? Not the most brilliant decision of my career, but oh fucking well. Life goes on. Now, while I was at Job Corps, I got a girlfriend, Stephanie Pearson. Love you, baby. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot's happened since my last video. I mean, a lot. I also lost my virginity. Hell does freeze over after all. <laughs> also, since I'm out of Job Corps, I need a job to afford stuff like an apartment, a car, hopefully soon, booze and cigarettes. So, I got a job working at Wendy's. It's a great job. They have me work in the lobby, great people to work with, you know. There are times it does get stressful, it's fast food, but... You know, I do what I gotta do to get a job. You know, I'm a, I'm a decent worker too. You know, I'm a really good worker, so. Like I mentioned before, my cores to my computer are gone. The minute I got home, I had to get a haircut. It's longer now, but when I got when I got a haircut, it was fucking short. But before I got my haircut, I had my hair down to my shoulders. It's fucking amazing. The cores to my PS2 are also gone, so I'm not even being allowed to play PS2. I'm getting by the best I can. Smoking and drinking. Cheers. <laughs> right now, I'm back in Casper, Wyoming. You know, I'm trying to get my life together. Now, I sent Job Corps an appeal letter, and my girlfriend Stephanie talked to the director, and she said it takes months to appeal something like that. So, until then, I gotta get a job. And if I get my own place before Job Corps says I can or can't come back, makes a decision. Either way, I gotta get a place to move out of my parents' house because it sucks. Don't get me wrong, I'm a, I appreciate my parents for letting me stay there and all that, but I'm hardly ever home because I'm always hanging out with my friend Chris and getting wasted or doing nothing with my life. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> Just um, thought I'd share that with all my fans, and thanks for watching the video. Gothic King Cobra. Peace. On August 7th, Josh posted the following on Facebook. My dad is helping me get a place of my own, don't know when, but hopefully soon. Throughout the month of August, Josh posted pictures of alcohol hauls on his Facebook. Drinking some Carmel Cobra. Fun, from five days ago, and it was my first time trying Captain Morgan, and I liked it and thought it was legit. Party time! Party time, that's Bacardi Torched Cherry and it's good. On August 9th, Josh expressed his frustration with his fans and posted the following on Facebook. What part of I can't make videos don't these dumb asses understand? I'll make them when I can, I promise. While on his lunch break, Josh would post pictures of his energy drinks and alcohol hauls in work at Wendy's. New energy drink I tried today, called Mon Avi. It's good. The amp is good and Monster Import is the shit. It's way good. Party time. Party time, the banana rum is good and the cherry cigars are excellent. Haven't tried the kind of American spirits yet. Bought it all after work today. For the rest of August, Josh continued his pattern of purchasing alcohol and tobacco with his work money. All these are good. Party time. Pipe tobacco. The C's pipe tobacco is perfect, and I've tried the crisscross black cherry before. It's good too. Party time. Party time. Tropical Cobra is what you get when you mix all these drinks. It's good. On September the 7th, Josh posted on Facebook that his old man took his cords again. As of right now, my computer cord got taken. Long story, don't know when I will get it back, but right now I'm suicidal and really depressed. No YouTube and no working on my fourth CD right now, I will try to hold on. On September the 16th, 
Josh posted the following on Facebook. Just figured out a way to upload videos from my iPod, which means more smoking videos. I'm uploading one right now to YouTube. Unfortunately, none of these videos are archived. Sometime in September, Josh's critically acclaimed documentary, Gothic King Cobra, was filmed by Trapped. Josh was still living at home with his parents and was working at Wendy's for a little over two months. Well, let's get to work at Wendy's and then um, I'm usually I'm on the lobby all the time, so I work the lobby and, I, you know, when it comes to like customers coming for a rush, I'm stacked up with trays and all kinds of crap, so I'm working my ass out to make sure that lobby looks good, so by the time I leave, the next person on the lobby doesn't do much of a job. It makes your job easier. On the 30th of September, Josh released his fourth album, The Darkness, on his TuneCore page. For the month of October, Josh wasn't very active on Facebook, but on October the 17th, Josh's dad Clint posted this update on his Facebook page. Just got done making a deposit for Josh's apartment. He'll be living in his own place in two weeks. In the video Random Topics, posted on November 29th, Josh elaborated and said that his parents had cashed in his savings bonds to pay for the deposit for his apartment. But yeah, I'm out of the house, we got my own place, so. And it took me four, four and a half months to get there, but I got there. We cashed in all my savings bonds I had from when I was a little kid, and that was enough to get me my own apartment and everything I needed to get into it, so, yeah. For the month of November, Josh was then active on Facebook due to him working night shifts at Wendy's and preparing to move into his new apartment. On November the 5th, Josh's dad, Clint, posted on Facebook, that he was helping Josh move into his new apartment soon. Moving my boy into his new apartment today, wahoo! Go Josh! That's if I can get him up, he's been working split shifts and his second ends at 3am. Yay Josh! Wow, what stays open till 3am? They started him closing at Wendy's, smiley face. The next day on November 6th, Clint posted on Facebook again that Josh was moved into his new apartment. Clint also spoke about Josh's work schedule and said that his new apartment was not close to Wendy's. In fact, Josh's apartment was an hour away from Wendy's in downtown Casper. Clint tried to get Josh to move into an apartment that was closer to his work, but Josh refused. The location of Josh's old apartment has been known since 2016. Josh moved apartments in late 2020, so his old apartment became public knowledge. Josh was living at 615 South Centre Street, apartment number 108. The cost of Josh's apartment was $500 a month, with utilities included. On November 9th, Josh posted on Facebook, I've been in my apartment for a couple of days now, still waiting to get my internet on my computer. On November the 12th, Josh was connected to the internet using the service provider, Spectrum, for $40 a month. Josh uploaded a new video called I'm Back and then posted the link on Facebook. Sadly, this video was not archived. The earliest video archived in November 2012 was Stephanie's birthday on November the 18th with a video called Random Phone Calls. Stephanie was still at Job Corps but came home to see Josh and her family for Christmas. In this video, Josh mentions that he was late to work because he missed the bus and had to walk three miles to work. Josh was glad that Wendy's was understanding and did not fire him. This marked the first of many incidents to come. And I told my manager at Wendy's too, I'm like, look, if I walk out a little sore, I apologize. You know, walking to work is not exactly easy. Ironically enough, I had to walk to work yesterday and I thought I'd made it to the bus in time. It turns out I didn't. And I thought, okay, so then I'll wait over the next bus stop. It's closer to Wendy's, somewhat closer anyway. And I look at the sign, it says, Saturday it stops at 3.30. I'm like, say what? I'm looking at my watch, it's like fucking five something. I'm like, god damn it, I'm late for work. So I have to get up, I have to walk to work, and I was going to be an hour and a half late for work. Luckily, I got a co worker or two who can give me a ride to work, so it's nice. I'm a friend, Chris, so I'm not late for work. So I ended up going to work at four, I'll be like an hour early for work. That's a lot better than being an hour and a half late. I'm very grateful that Wendy's hasn't fired me because of my lateness. I really appreciate that, that they're being very 
generous and understanding with my situation here. Josh also showed some competence in paying for his internet and rent a month in advance. Sadly, this routine would only last a short period of time. On November 28th, Josh spoke about some issues that they are having at Wendy's. Josh said that there was a possibility of the restaurant being shut down by Wendy's corporate and that he was planning on looking to find a new job at a familiar location. 3.53 in the morning. Just got off work. I'm fucking tired. But I love working graveyard shifts at Wendy's because there's less customers and less bullshit and less drama. It's just get in and get your shit done and get out. And of course, I'm riding my bike to work now. So, yeah. Yep, been cranking in the hours at Wendy's. Although, I will say there's, the commute to work's kind of a bitch. Because I live all the way downtown right now. And in the general area, I should, I should say. Freaking, uh... Wendy's is all the way on the other side of town. So, that's right. Not, and it's just right up one street, a couple of hills, and then you're there. Yeah, corporate's coming into Wendy's sometime this week. And if we get another strike... Everyone's out of a fucking job and they're shutting down the store and tearing it down and shit, so... It's good that everyone's taking extra time out of, in their shift to make sure they do a really good job cleaning, otherwise we lose a job completely. Now, I'm not saying it'll happen, but I'm thinking of going and applying at um, Wolf and Jug down the street. There's one that's really close to my apartment here, so... I'll apply there just in case. Um, and if they hire me, and I still have a job at Wendy's, you know... I might work, I might work two jobs, I might not. Um, we'll see. But I should say, Wendy's has been very, has been very good to me, very patient with me and stuff, because of my Asperger's and my relocating to a father location for residents. In Loafing Jug, I was talking to the one of the workers there who I knew from a previous job I'd worked in fast food, and he said they start off at ten dollars an hour with benefits. I'm like, oh, I'm making like eight fifty an hour at Wendy's. That's fifty cents more plus benefits, and it's conveniently closer. But, you know, tomorrow's my day off, so tomorrow. Um, I'll uh, shave, really the rest of the nail polish, and, you know, ride my bike down to the local jug and um, see if I can apply there for, um, and I'm not looking for a job right now because I have a job, but on the offhand chance that if corporate does shut down Wendy's and everyone is going, oh shit, what am I going to do for a job, and, you know what I'm saying, so it's always good to think ahead. I know it's kind of negative thinking, but at the same time it's smart because it's like, okay, what if on the offhand chance Wendy's does get shut down, and, you know what I'm saying, Everyone there may have a job, including me, so it's just smart thinking. On December 1st, Josh made a video addressing criticism from his trolls, who were making fun of him, saying that he was claiming SSI to pay for his rent. This is from a Jupiter Nash sent me a message. Hey, please lose that spiked collar, it makes you look like you want to submit. Also, start wearing big boy clothes. No brands, no skulls. Please, no more fucking skulla. Okay, one, you're not my dad. Two, I live at my own apartment. I make my own rules. Three, nope, 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 nope. You can't make me kiss my ass. This this kind of shit just amuses the fuck out of me. It's people trying to tell me that I'm not growing up because I'm wearing my own clothing. Yet, yeah, grown ups work a job, which I do, pay their own bills, which I do. Oh yeah, and live in my own apartment, which I do. Stop seeing you pay your bills, you live with SSI. Um, no, actually I haven't got my, I haven't even got my first SSI check yet. Um, I've been paying my bills with my money I work my ass off for at Wendy's. Hmm. So, I understand if you're trying to help, but the thing is, it's just Sunday unnecessary necessariness. Like this video. So. On December 3rd, the Wendy's Josh was working at was not closed down, so he gave up on the idea of applying for another job. Instead, Josh was going to focus his efforts on getting a driver's license to make his commute to work a little bit easier. I decided not to go applying for other jobs. Uh, I'll stick with Wendy's, they've been really good to me, really patient, and I'm a hard worker there. I might be the fastest worker there, but I'm one of the hardest workers there. The only problem is the commute. Right now, I'm riding my bike to work or taking the bus, trying to drive from a friend or a co worker. Just to save time and hassle, I'll just take the bike now and um, I'll start looking at options, get into an apartment, and I'm thinking, no, I like the apartment I'm in right now. It's comfortable, it's cozy, and it works for me just fine. And moving is a pain in the ass, so um, thinking about getting my driver's license, definitely want to get that, and um, just even for a car. And 
I find a car I like. It's pretty freaking sweet, say. So. Um, 77 Lincoln Mark V, and it's all green. Fucking gorgeous car. But uh, by the time I get the money for it saved up, I'm, chances are it's probably going to be sold. So if that's the case, then I can buy a car locally in Gasper if I have the $4,000 saved up. You know what I'm saying? So. On December 5th, Josh was entitled to his SSI and went grocery shopping with his dad, Clint. To head off the trolls, Josh made a video saying that he would only use his SSI when he was in dire need. It's also worth noting that Josh's dad, Clint, is Josh's payee, meaning that Josh does not have access to his SSI and only Clint does. Or so it would seem. And there's um, nothing wrong with being SSI. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Now if you're abusing it, then you're a mooch, but I'm not. Um, my SSI is for my rent if I ever need to pay it and or for groceries. My dad came over two days ago and he's like, you got our groceries? I'm like, yeah, kind of. And he goes, do you have any money? I'm like, no, I don't get paid till Wednesday. So my dad took me out shopping for groceries, which was really nice to him, okay? And the last thing I'm gonna do is just start saving up for a car. Um, I have a car I want, but all the time I get the money for it, it'll probably be gone, so... My dad said if I get money saved up for a car, it'll take me out car shopping. You know, life's going good for me. I got my place, I got my girlfriend, I got an awesome job working with you. I fucking love working with these dude. Winnie's is a shit, okay? For real, they've been real good to me, and I really appreciate everything that they've done for me, especially with my Asperger's being very patient with me and stuff. Working split shifts and getting home at 3 or 4 in the morning started to get to Josh. And then on December 5th, Josh mentioned in another one of his videos that he'd often start to fall asleep at work. This was in part due to Josh not getting enough rest between his shifts and would just pull all-nighters before work. You now I was at work, I was feeling kind of sleeping, you know, whatever, and um, my coworker says, here, which is in my pocket. I'm like, what? I pull out one of these. He's like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. And I was kind of bad. It's a five hour extra. These things are fucking awesome. Okay, these things are pretty fucking awesome. I felt it boom like that, but it lasted, dude. But it didn't, um, the caffeine buzz didn't really kick in until um, I freaking started drinking the stuff was working in there. The very next day, on December 6th, the very first instance of a troll calling Josh's work happened. This effort by the troll was fruitless, as the owner of the Wendy's Josh worked at was aware of Josh's videos and his trolls. How desperate are we to troll me? Seriously. It's pathetic. I want to be out of it. <laughs> I'm going to call Wendy's and tell them what a little punk ass I am. That's going a bit far, don't you think? The thing is, they love me at Wendy's, dude. I'm one of the best workers there. I mean, we're one of the fastest, but one of the best workers there, because... I take on a lot of work. I mean, I'm the fastest, like I said. I admit, I'm not the fastest worker at Wendy's, obviously. But I'm one of the best because I work really hard. So, And at some point in your life, do you realize you're willing to call work and get someone fired just because you hate me for whatever false accusations you come up with? At some point in your life, do you think that's a bit excessive? That maybe you're caring about my reaction just a little too much? I mean, quite frankly, I find it rather amusing that you're willing to go that far just to spite me somehow and quite frankly it's pathetic it really is the owner of the store we're good friends do we talk all the time at work so yeah and the owner of the store sees my youtube and she likes what i do on youtube she said he's a good kid he's got a good head on his shoulders okay i appreciate that it's nice to know that people acknowledge my existence <laughs> On that same day, in another video, Josh divulged more information about his finances and revealed that he'd been paid $700 for working two weeks worth of split shifts at Wendy's. It's also worth noting that Josh would be paid by check, so he'd have to pay all of his bills with cash. And that's too much money I have left. 100, 200, I still have $373 left. Two hundred dollars right here. Put that down for the next month's rent to start it anyway, and then use the rest of it for um, personal spending money. Cause I already got groceries and I already got bills paid off. And there's nothing that's getting wrong with getting help from the SSI. I think people are just jealous that they can't get it because, yeah. No, no but seriously, there's nothing wrong with getting help from the from the government if it's needed. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
So right now, if I need to buy groceries, I won't have enough money to buy groceries. But I ran out of groceries just short two days before pay before payday. So unfortunately, I, I uh, yeah. Um, but you're thinking, well, if you have enough money for food, money, and all this other, why you need an SSI in case of emergencies? Like if I ran out of groceries and I wasn't gonna get paid for a couple of days anyway. So yeah. I think what pisses you off is all these haters talking shit. Your hard earned task money goes to feed me, and you want and you want to see me die, don't you? Oh, too bad, that's so sad. I'm getting there slowly. <laughs> yeah. So if I was trying to mooch off the sign, yeah, I used I would have bought all the tobacco and all that with the booze, but and the booze with the SSI, but I didn't. So I used that on my hard earned money at Wendy's. And believe it or not, my taxes I pay are going to pay for people like me as well, so just shut the fuck up. Won't you be tired tomorrow, Josh? When eleven when you get to work at eleven? Yeah, well I only look till two for the first half of the split shift and then I'll back go back in and work at six to one, so I can you know, take a quick nap in the lobby if I have to. You know, then I have a problem with it obviously. On December 7th, Josh recalled some shenanigans with his work colleagues and even talked about the Trap documentary, Gothic King Cobra. I had a YouTube user by the name of Trapped with three Ps, okay? And his friend Aaron, they came to uh, Casper here to do a documentary about me. Just before I moved to my apartment here and um, a lot of fun working on it. Um, yeah, this documentary, I have a good feeling about how it's going to turn out. Um, it is legit, believe it or not. There's a uh, teaser on his um, channel, so oh, uh, part of my personality. Um, <sighs> I do crazy. Oh, sorry. I do crazy voices and shit. And um, so, some of my coworkers are talking about flamingos and like they're not real. I'm like yeah, they are. So I'm like it's fairy fedora, the pink flamingo, fabulous. <laughs> But then it came down to Felipe, Fairy Fedora, the flamboyant flamingo, one of the characters I do for voices just for shits and giggles at work. It's Felipe, Fairy Fedora, the flamboyant flamingo, fabulous! <laughs> Ruffle some feathers on Broadway, baby, with his best friend Alvin, the albino peacock! <laughs> Hi, my name is Felipe, Fairy Fedora. I'm a flamboyant flamingo, a fabulous! No, I'm not gay. And I realize it's very, you know, yeah. And people can talk all the shit they want, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's very insulin to horse homosexuals, Josh. I do that shit at work, and one of my managers is actually a lesbian. She finds that shit funny, funnier than hell, so, yeah. That's all in good fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. On December 9th, Josh gave a bad review for one of the local cab companies in town. Josh claimed that the driver didn't wait for Josh and left, resulting in Josh being late for work. Josh had the wherewithal to call Wendy's beforehand and let them know that he'd be late. So, um, Yellow Cab and Casper is really bad customer service. So today, I realized I had to be at work at 12, I called well in advance for the cab, so I know to be there on time for work, right? Here's what happened. They said, 10 minutes will be here. All right, cool. So I finished getting ready for work, and I'm heading out the door, ready to go, and they're not there. So I called them and asked, um, where are you guys at? And I quote, this is what they said. Um, you were 20 minutes, and I'm going to sit here and fucking wait for you and shit, and blah, blah, blah. So we left. We'll try to get the, someone down there when we can. I'm like, okay. That kind of pisses me off. Um, so I went and called Casper Cabs, a different cab company, and... I called them and very professional and we'll we'll see. Now it might be now Yellow Cap is the cheapest in town, unfortunately, but because my bike's broken right at the moment and I don't have time to fix it. But at the same time, when I do get it fixed, it'll I'll be good to go again. So I took and I got some money, so I can take a cab and a bus if I need to to get to work on time and stuff. So yeah, and I called Wendy's ahead of time, let them know the story, what's going on. So if I'm a little late, you know they know. Okay. It's all about taking personal responsibility, and quite frankly, Yellow Cab in the past has been, recently has been really shitty, and I thought, you know what, maybe I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, and just, you know, give them the call. And it turns out that this just, this is the final straw. I'm done using Yellow Cabs, man. Hello? Thank you, ma'am, I'll be right there in a second.
All right, bye. Yeah, bye. Cab's here, so. Around the 18th of December, Josh let his friend Chris, aka Couch Chris, stay in his apartment for a little while. Chris was kicked out and was living in his van, so Josh felt bad for him and let him sleep on his futon. For Josh's hospitality, Chris would occasionally drive Josh to work in his van. Allowing Chris to stay with him had a negative effect on Josh, financially, as Josh's dad, Clint, told Josh that he'd not be able to claim SSI while Chris was living with him. Josh's videos also declined in quality as Chris would play video games with his brother, also named Josh, in an effort to drown Josh out, maybe to try and put him off making videos? But that's for you to decide. Good morning, YouTube. Um, a little hungover. Um, so I'm drinking some, uh, the Rockstar I had in my fridge. Got some caffeine going, knock, out, knock all the alcohol out of my system before I go to work. I don't know if I didn't mention this in my last video, but I no longer have SSI at the moment. Um, everything, um, my apartment, my food, everything, I'm buying on my own, okay? Which means I'm going to have to start budgeting my money a little better. <laughs> That's my dad's going to be pissed because I'm, I'm lost. How's Chris doing? So he's doing good. We, we met at lunch yesterday and I said, I told him about Chris being kicked out of his grandfather, so I told him to sort of just live with me to like some place. And, um, that's my dad's not too happy because with the SSI know and you know, shit like that. There's a possibility I could lose my SSI permanently, and you know what? It's gonna suck if I do, but the thing is, you know, I think it's, you know, it's, I think it's worth it because, you know, it's helping a friend out, you know? It's Christmas time, it's cold outside, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna be like, hey, Chris, you can't stay here, sorry, fuck that, you know, fuck that dude. It's not There's, like I'm not gonna help. Exactly, you know, and it's like, you know what, you had, you're gonna be staying in your van, you know? shit like that and you don't do that before and before I couldn't help you out like that like this because I was living with my parents they wouldn't, they wouldn't have been okay with it but you know, they got my own place to it and you need a place to crash it, it you know so SSI is weird because um um I didn't spend yeah, all the money they gave me well my dad didn't do it because my dad's controlled the SSI um, in time, time so they're like you need to uh shit so now, I now owe them money, like 200 some odd dollars, so, yeah. Plus I owe like 46 something for internet and like 500 for rent, so. And I'll just pay rent until to the first of next month, but, um, the way Wendy's paychecks are, um, I might not get it in time, so. It's best that I take care of the, all the bills now and be responsible as an adult here, okay? I'm thinking it's a responsibility. But you drank like a fucking idiot in the last video, Mom. We want to talk all your shit you want. Okay. I noticed some of the vodka was gone. Did you guys have a couple shots? I have a couple shots. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I guess I don't mind sharing my, my booze. Dude, can you see that handling? <sighs> dude, I have shit for handling, dude. I know my old channel, I kind of was talking about how much you day at work and dealing with stupid people. And um, the weird thing is. The person I talked about in the video actually saw it. Oh, my coworkers. That was bad. But, um, ever since then, she's been really cool with me at work and stuff. You know, we were actually getting along, so. I didn't actually mention her name per se, just some of the actions that she's been doing, that she has done in the past, and how it concerned me. And, yeah. And ever since then, I noticed she's been a lot nicer at work to deal with, and that's really appreciated on my part. And I think. Some of my other coworkers are noticing that too. I think they're appreciating it as well. So, okay. So when I go to work, when you come back, it'd be really awesome if you can help clean up a little bit. You don't have to do it all if you don't want to, but like right, if you oh, find, I'll have it done by the time you get back. Okay. If you find my vampire things, do that'd be sick. If you just, you know, yeah, find the cases and all that fun, put it back together. So, that'd be no really problem. awesome. Thank you. I mean, what are friends for other than holding you down when you need it? <laughs> well, my inner demons, yeah. And um, on my old account, I talked about the grapefruit story, and <laughs> of course my coworkers saw it, and they all gave me shit about it. I just laughed, you know, you know. On December 20th, Josh killed in sick to work after a night of drinking with Chris and his brother the night before. Uh, today I wasn't feeling too good. Yeah, last night at work, I was towards the end of my shift, I was hopping between the bathroom and lobby, so, because <laughs> I work a lot at Wendy, so. Using the restroom a lot at work last night, and this morning, pretty much the same, so. Uh, I started to feel a little better, did a little bit of Christmas shopping, got 
got my internet bill paid off, um, rent's next, um, the list of bills to pay off. Then towards the afternoon, I started feeling like shit again, like, you wouldn't be like, eh, you know, so. I didn't want to risk getting my co-workers and the customers sick, so I called in sick. On Christmas Eve, Josh put in a shift at Wendy's and then went home to see his family for a Christmas party. All while, Chris stayed at Josh's apartment and played video games. I have to be at work until 11.30ish, so I figured, you know what? Have a little bit of, um, Rockstar. Is that really, wait, that's a... Yeah, it's not a beer. I was like, is that really smart to do right before work? Nigga, I don't drink before work, you know me, shit. I'm too stressed out at work, so I get to wear jeans and a nice green t-shirt. Being it's Christmas, you know, you get a chance to, yeah, black jeans and a green t-shirt, a little sharp going to work. <sighs> On Boxing Day, Josh received a letter in the mail, letting him know that he does not qualify for SSI anymore as he was earning too much money working overtime at Wendy's. And I gotta say, it's quite nice to come home after a hard day at work to um, my own apartment that I'm paying for by myself. Cause I don't have my SSI anymore. I got a letter from people at SSI saying I make too much money at Wendy's to have SSI. So, it's really good, which means I can live independently now. The thing is, I only used SSI once since I've had it, and I was still eating groceries because I was out. But now I don't have SSI anymore. Um, I'm 100% on my own, budgeting my money like a responsible young adult. So they're saying things like, Well, you got all this booze and tobacco, Josh. What about your rent, huh? Already taken care of. What about your internet bill, Josh? Already taken care of. What about your groceries, Josh? Already taken care of. And ironically enough, I haven't been hitting the booze too hard lately. I just didn't feel the need to, which is weird because I went through a couple of weeks, and you all seen it on YouTube where. I was drinking like like crazy and just didn't care. It's because I was depressed. Um. On December 28th, Josh attempted to drive Couch Chris's van to pay rent and buy a stick of butter. Sadly, Josh only got as far as five minutes down the road before Casper PD's finest pulled him over and issued Josh a fine of roughly $120. Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> Um, we were out of butter and I went to go pay the rent and we're doing laundry right now and it would have been easier I would have given you a shirt to wear and we could have just driven there yourself. True, but I wasn't thinking very much. No, you weren't. Well, basically what happened was we were doing laundry and Chris doesn't have a shirt to wear and he's like, he, I, he needs to go pick up some butter and pay the rent. I'm like, alright, I'll do that. And you know what he does? The dumbass gives me the keys to his van. And I, the bigger dumbass, accepts the challenge. Guess what? I don't have a driver's license. Guess what? I almost hit a cop car. Guess what? I got a fucking ticket. Joyous. Now, of course, I was very compliant, very polite to the cop. I didn't smart off or anything, because at this point, the guy's pulling me over without a license. You know, he could have done worse. So. And the cop yeah, was very polite. He wasn't rude or anything. He's just like, you know, I pulled you over, and I'm like, no. And he's like, uh, you made a left hand turn and damn near hit me. That's 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 driving me twice this weekend. This day, weekend. I'm like, oh. He goes, do you have a license? I'm like, no, permit anything? No, it's just your van? My friend Chris is, I was just telling him, I was going on the grocery store to get butter and pay rent and stuff, and he's like, oh, okay, running through, running through the addresses, I have my ID and stuff, and I check out, so he's all right, all right, cool. He goes, can you at least park the van? I'm like, yeah, I'll try parking the van. He's like, stop, 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 stop. He had to tell me how to park the van. I'm like, okay, uh, uh -huh. God. He's like, why don't you have a driver's license? I'm like, well, to be honest with you, I never had the motivation to get one because, quite frankly, I never driven the car that much, and, yeah. I'll shoot you with this one. Anyway, I got a ticket. I can do here. Um, he can get off the community service. I could. And I'm due in court for February to um, take care of it, so in between now and February if I pay for it. So I got too much to pay it off. No problem. Anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much just to what's happened so far. It's been a good year. Cheers. Also, Casting Messiah has been a good year. Um, got my fourth CD done. Met my girlfriend Stephanie. So, there are some positives to 2012. What will 2013 hold? Hard to say.
On January 2nd, Josh spoke about getting more hours at Wendy's and was happily making roughly $1,400 a month. Josh even thought about purchasing a Gibson SG for $400 from a pawn shop called Mr. Money. Oh, work today was really good, actually. I'm, I went and I got my shit done like I was supposed to. And I was in a speedy mood for work, so I think those um, energy drinks helped get my butt in gear because of all the caffeine and sugar. <laughs> but, although I did see a, a Gibson SG, the, a red one, in the Mr. Money for like 400 bucks. I'm like, oh my god. It's a pretty awesome guitar. A new guitar always sounds nice, but then it's like, I got two guitars, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I might get a new guitar tomorrow, I might not. Yeah, but I got groceries and, and I'm internet and, and taking care of and all that, so I can have a little fun with my next paycheck here. My paycheck here. I just got my paycheck today, like $709 and some odd cents. So, between, I make about 700 something a month with each paycheck. Like, with each paycheck I get, every month I get like 700 some odd dollars. So, make a little 1400 It's enough to um, get by. You know, I don't make too much to have SSI, so and before that I wasn't making enough money at Wendy's, but now they, they increase my hours and all that, so I don't make enough to support myself. What about Chris? You know, he's staying here temporarily. He's got a good job, you know. What about his brother Josh? Well, he comes over to hang out sometimes. It happens, you know. A couple of dudes have a couple of beers and bullshit on Xbox. It happens, you know. On January 8th, Josh's dad Clint's ears were burning and called Josh to lecture him about saving money. Josh wasn't very thrilled, as you can imagine. I know I got Wednesday and Thursday off this week, and then I work Friday through Sunday, so. Um, I've been getting lots of hours at Wendy's, I really do appreciate that, you know, it's helping me keep my apartment and stuff, so. I got a system down to where my bills are always paid, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've been in the apartment for about um, uh, three months now. It feels like four months, but this will be the third month I've been living in the apartment. And I'm doing all right, you know? And granted, my dad worries about me and lectures me and stuff, and I think he doesn't give me the benefit of the doubt. Um, but he's, he's a parent, and you know how parents are. He's just concerned that, um, you know, I might not make it, but I'm doing all right. On January 24th, Sadly, Josh didn't handle his finances properly, and overspent his money on alcohol and groceries. Josh said that he couldn't afford his rent and had to dip into his savings account to pay his rent, which was $500. Chris was still jobless and at this point was not contributing anything. Good news is I got paid. Bad news is it's not enough. Luckily enough, though, I have money in my savings account to take care of rent, take care of the rest of my rent, which means I can't spend a dime on my paycheck on anything but rent. So, rent's taken care of. Internet, on the other hand, might not be. I had $200 at the beginning of the month from the paycheck. If I were to save that paycheck and not take it on tobacco and just alcohol, I'm like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Or just not spend it all, period, and save it up, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I saved a hundred dollars on my paycheck, at least in the random when I cut the wrench. And then maybe in the But I didn't think much to my chagrin, I did not budget my money very well. So you're saying, well, where did that hundred dollars go? Uh, that, so you're saying, where did that two hundred dollars go, if you are asking? Well, a number of things. Um, groceries and gas for Chris's van. Which is now impounded, basically, so Chris lost his van. It broke down on the highway. Well, here's how it sits. I got money for rent, but I don't got money for internet. And unless Chris can come up with um, 75 bucks, I'm not gonna have internet for two weeks. Which means I might be taking a little vacation from YouTube. Now, I don't know if what Chris is gonna do to get 75 fucking dollars for my internet bill. But he has till the first. He has, he's moving out anyway. But he has till the first. So he says, "I'll, I'll finally get seventy-five dollars." I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, good luck with that." Unless he wants to pawn his Xbox, then he might he might get seventy-five dollars for that. But right now, Chris is in the middle of a contest with his brother in Minecraft on the Xbox, and he has to be another month to finish it. So I talked to my dad, and he's like, "Well, Josh, we got sixty dollars in your savings account, so we can." get you covered for rent, you know, and I'm like, alright, that's cool. So I'll still be able to stay in this apartment, I think. 
so much this thing on. <laughs> I'm flat fucking broke. I don't have no money for cigarettes or booze. And since Chris is moving out, um, but I mean, uh, one less mouth to feed just myself if I ever get hungry. And I'm sure it's like all chicken serve on what little groceries I do have. On what little groceries I do have. So, yeah, this is gonna suck. But I will get through this. The last couple of weeks have been very stressful because I've been wanting to get paid, get my bills paid, just to find out I didn't make enough money to pay bills. <laughs> so, first things first, I'm going to go into Wendy's when I go to Wendy's to work today. If I see my scheduling manager, I'm going to be very polite and be like, look, I didn't make enough money to pay all my bills as paycheck, so I'm going to need a shit ton of hours. If you give me a shit ton of hours, I'd be eternally grateful. And they say, well, Josh, we can't give you any hours. I'm sorry. And we're like, well, that's just fabulous. What am I supposed to do then? No, I made 61 hours as paycheck. And that was like way off over time. So and because of that, like 8.50 an hour, I made $436 in some odd sense. Now, yeah, that kind of sucked, but at least I got a paycheck. So that's one way to look at it. And so right now I'm in a really tough spot where I'm going to be out of cigarettes and possibly out of the internet. So yeah, but my W-2 is coming at the end of the month, which will be nice if I get any money back from that. I might be able to use that to um, pay off some bills and stuff. So, yeah. The thing is, I don't know how to file taxes, and if I do it wrong, I might, you know, I might not get any money back. But, um, yeah, so that's why I'm having it sent to my dad's old, to my old residence. And... Yeah. Um. On January 27th, Chris was arrested and Josh had finally had enough and unloaded on Chris and buried him. Uh, Chris got arrested. He had a warrant out for his arrest and he'll be in jail till Monday. And Monday he has court. So Chris now has no job, no car, and he's in jail. Yeah. My all honest sincerity and hope is that Chris is doing some serious thinking right now if he's awake about what he wants to do with his life. Because right now he's not in a good direction. Not going in a good direction. And believe me, it's not just the trolls and the people on YouTube saying he's mooching off me. My dad says it. Even not my friends from the ZRT are saying it. These people are not outside of ZRT, obviously. But even they, they came over for a bit to. And Chris had left the apartment temporarily to let someone in, talk for a bit, and. I mentioned my concerns to them about Chris living here, and they agreed with that Chris is being a mooch. He has helped out on occasion, I will admit this, he has a cleaned up once in a while. Once in a while he cooks, and once in a while he gets me right to work, but his van's impounded as far as I know. Now, there's a, a couple of things I've seen Chris actually seemingly care about in his life. Cigarettes, alcohol, weed, parties, Xbox. ZRT, helping out with his sister, and jobs and everything else, you know. I knew Chris from a distance, you know what I'm saying? Like, we hang out, we wouldn't talk much. Living with a guy for a couple months now, and I understand why his grandfather and his dad both kicked him out, and his sister kind of kicked him out, you know. Was, well, I don't mind helping him out, but at the same time, he's got forth some effort here. If he's not working, at least he could just clean up the apartment. And he goes, well, I should have to clean all of it, Josh. It is your apartment. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't want to... I, I work at Wendy's all day, basically, cleaning lobby. That's what I do for a living right now. And the last thing I is coming to a messy apartment. The steps I come home and he's on his fat ass on the futon playing Xbox. Like, hey man, what's up? I'm like, oh, hi. I mean, the apartment's still a mess. Um, personally, I think this is karma biting Chris in the ass for all the shit he's been doing. So, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. As far as, but I will know this, is that um, Chris has till the end of the month. There is no two-week waiting bullshit period, you know what I'm saying? If uh, my friend Matt has his job at the dealership, at the car dealership, and he's getting his apprenticeship, then I told him flat out, well, Chris is not letting someone in, like, I can't do this anymore, dude, I'm sorry. You know, he's like, I understand, you. I understand. I'm like, okay, thank you, you know. I mean, if he gave a shit, he might actually be somewhere with his life right now. Not mooching off his good friend. Oh, my dad money because he had to help pay off my SSI. <laughs> and speaking of SSI, I got a letter from them saying I owe them another hundred and eighty some dollars. 
for December when they overpaid me. Thing is, in December they weren't paying me SSI. They taken it off to begin with because I got paid too much to begin with. So they're charging me money they haven't given me. That's kind of fucking bullshit, dude. That's like, well, here's your money because you know you're you're kind of down on your luck and you kind of oh nope man. So that flat out pissed me the fuck off. I'm like, no, I ain't fucking paying this. Screw them, dude. If that if it means I'm gonna be broke as fuck for a long time, then so be it, dude. I'm not gonna. I think it's better that I budget my money better. So, yeah. For the next few weeks, Josh was busting his ass at Wendy's and was trying to budget his money better because he had to pay the $120 ticket he got for driving Chris's van. We'll close the lobby all next week except for Sunday, so... Yeah. So I'm a little ecstatic. I like closing. Dude, closing is the shit, dude. I come home late at night, sleep all day, work all night, you know? It's my kind of schedule, dude. Works beautifully. But uh, tomorrow I won't be sleeping in too much because I gotta get up and I go pay my tickets and then I come back and work in my apartment some more and get this shit cleaned up more, so... Yeah, I got some. I got blisters on the top and bottom of my toes here. Ooh, ah, damn. And it hurts to walk. Like you wouldn't believe. I was driving on my ankles all fucking night long, dude. Now, if I'm working graveyard shifts, so you know what I'm saying. It's, um, I can't. The bus doesn't run that late, so I usually get right home from somewhere, and I really been appreciating. I really helps me a lot. So, but yeah, I just could, you know, get my license and get sale for a car. I wouldn't worry about him getting the car out the way he spends money on tobacco and booze. So I reckon he'll go back to the apartment and run out of booze and tobacco and go buy more. No, 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 you know. These people must think I'm stupid. You know, they think that I can't read the comments, but I can. But I choose to ignore them because, let's face it, man, there's bigger issues at hand. Look at that, dude. You see my foot? It's all red and blistered. The other one's the exact same thing. And look at that. This is just, oh, dude. Gnarly shit, dude. And the other foot is the exact same thing. It's like, ugh. Yeah. It's a cold monster can on my foot. Ooh, it's cold. On March 1st, a similar situation to Couch Chris happened again. A fellow co worker called Kent was in a spot of bother, so Josh extended his helping hand. This is also the same video where Josh put a porn tape of him and Stephanie on his iPod. Josh also spoke about how hard it is not to flirt with fellow co-workers. Um, this is my friend Kent. He works with me at Wendy's. Um, he's a place to crash. He was sleeping in his truck. I said, you know what, you can come stay with me until I get your own place. It's cool, dude. So, yeah. And he's a pretty cool dude, you know. He's quiet, doesn't make too much noise. <laughs> it's probably a good thing so the neighbors won't hate him. I imagine the neighbors didn't like Chris that much, but... And you know what's ironic as fuck is that I work with women all day at Wendy's and I got no problems with that, but when you're single it kind of sucks because, just saying, you know, I do my best to keep my mouth shut and, you know, work because it's not my place to flirt in the office. It's just it's a sexual harassment policy and I just I don't want to risk it. And you think to yourself, well, and here's the ironic fuck of it all is that 98% of people I work with are female. There's about 2% male population, so we're outnumbered, man. In fact, this brand of time, you know, I'm, I'm carrying this huge thing of sweet tea for the lobby. I'm like, sweet behind, you know, I'm trying to carry it behind me and stuff, because it's big, you, know, you gotta stay behind, so people are, because that kitchen's tiny, so you want to run into someone, you know, and I'm spilling a beef or getting burnt or something like that, so, you know, one of the older women's like, now she knows I'm behind Josh, you see, you think it's sweet, don't you? I'm like, no, it's, I think she's being a smart ass, but still, it was like, really? Oh, come on now, that's just creepy, come on. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, work humor, I guess, so, you know, you don't want to get to you, you know, so. The thing of it is, too, man, is that with iPod Touch, I can watch video on it, so I can actually put porn on Stephanie May on my computer on my iPod and watch it on my convenience when I'm at home. Fuck, 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 fuck. And then I go and see the pictures of me and Stephanie on Facebook all happy together and shit, and I go, oh. On March 3rd, Josh uploaded the much-loved and arguably the best video Josh has ever made, Payday, or as you know it, the hair dye video. As you all know, Josh mixed up his dates and got a call from his manager to let him know that he was late for work. Uh, I got paid Wednesday, and I thought I had to work at 11.30 today, so I called for a ride, and 
Got my check cashed early, which is really nice, you know, and all that. Oh, it turns out I also work till 5 tonight, so... So, I went and did a little bit of shopping, and, um... Bought me a monster, and finished that off, you know, and, uh... Here's the case, uh, so I got some, um... Hair dye, I'm gonna do that in a bit, but, uh... Hold that thought. Hello? Oh, uh, what were you saying? No, I was shopping. Oh, Jesus Christ. I. Oh, my. I'm already at the apartment. Son of a bitch. Wow. Well, I feel like an idiot. Alright. Damn it. Alright, that works. I'm so sorry I missed those to the dates. <laughs> Alright, bye bye. Fuck. Well, I feel like an idiot. Um, I missed her at the days, and it's Thursday, not Friday. I was supposed to come in at 11 30 to f um, 7. But they said I could come in at 4, so. Right, what time is it? Alright, I got plenty of time. So. Yikes. <laughs> I must I must read the dates, so I'll go in at four. You know, I can do that. Um oh, I feel like an idiot. Yeah, that was a major mistake. I thought it was Friday, not Thursday. Fuck. <laughs> but thankfully enough, Wendy's is very patient and very understanding, so they said I can come back and work at four, so If they ask why is your skin blue, Josh? I'd like I thought I'd come to as an avatar. I'm part avatar, you know. <laughs> On March 12th, Josh officially announced that Couch Chris was out of his apartment for good. We would never see a Couch Chris appearance on Josh's channel ever again. I had that up for a reason, I swear to God. But Chris came over and crashed on the food time, like old times, you know, just whatever, so. But he's officially out of the apartment, so. Get all stuff and got the fuck out of here. So yeah, Chris is officially out of, out of the uh, apartment, people. So get the pan to myself again. Sweet. There we go. On May 3rd, Josh was hit with a bombshell. His dad Clint called and let him know that the money he used in his savings account to pay for his rent was actually his SSI money. In case you don't know, SSI money needs to be accounted for, so receipts are needed. We also learned that Josh may have been dipping into this money a little bit more than we originally thought. Well, as it turns out, my savings account money is SSI money given to me. Yeah. I thought I was off of it. I don't know if I am or not. I hope I am off of it because SSI is a pain in the ass. Well, here's the thing. If they overpay you, they don't blame themselves for it. They make you pay them back because it's your fault they, they overpaid you. But that's life, I guess. So yeah, that shit sucks too, especially when you know your dad goes and goes, "Oh my God, I just checked your savings account. You spent seven hundred and seventy dollars in the last two months. What were you spending it on?" Um, I spent on rent for this month. I had rent covered from last month already. Um, internet was like over a hundred bucks because there was some cancellation fees and all that other shit I had to deal with. Uh, the bike needed to be fixed, I needed groceries, so yeah. This shit adds up quickly, it really does. Especially I'm supposed to be off SSI, and yeah, I've come to find out that my savings account money is actually from SSI money, really. And considering too that um, I was told by my, my dad that, well, it's your money, you know your money so I'm like well okay if it's my money then what the fuck you know <laughs> it's ridiculous but anyway okay so my dad sends a message back says 500 in the account was from your tax refunds but the other 270 you took for was SSI money so it needs to be accounted for don't take any more money out of the, the that account if you need money let me know we'll figure out something on safe this way all right man what are you spending the money on? And here's the thing, man. 
my dad thinks he's perfect, but he's not. And I can acknowledge that I'm not perfect. So sometimes I want to become a bigger man than my dad. But the thing is, I'm not. My dad has the house, the cars, more money than me. So whatever, dude. I got my own apartment at least. So at least I'm trying. Take it to leave, I guess. <sighs> I mean, my opinion, I would have... You know, if I had a savings account with SSI, I would have kept that separate for emergencies only and kept the one savings account for money I make. You know, that way I can spend it whenever I need to. You know, it's convenient. But no, having a one savings account is so much more convenient. Well, it's money either way, so, and I didn't know my SSI money was being put into that account. I wasn't told anything. Also, you got $100 for transportation. I'm like, okay, where'd it come from? Didn't even know, didn't even know, because I thought, oh, I'm off my SSI, so I'll, I didn't know where it, you know. Grr, this shit's frustrating. And it's it's lack of communication or lack of words said that create misunderstandings like that, and because of that, shit like this has to fucking happen. So, yeah. And I can admit, I got budgeting problems with my money. I need to get better at budgeting my money. But... Sadly, this is the end of the Wendy's Saga Part 1. Part 2 will be out soon. I'd like to give a big thank you to Guys Overdrive for making the song for this video. Check him out. Also, I see all the YouTube members in the chat. Spam rest in peace homeboy Scotty for me. You know, keep, keep, keep it coming. I'll wait. Keep, keep it going. Alright, that's enough. Here's a little sneak peek of what's coming up in Part 2 of the Wendy's Saga. I was this close, taking his head and sticking it in the fryer, watching his face melt off all over the fryer grease. I'm tired of being broke all the goddamn time. Both my managers sat there chewing my ass about it, and I didn't do it intentionally, okay? Had I known which tea was which. So yeah, I got fired from Wendy's today. Why is that? And it was not my intention to have him lose his job. King Cobra JFS is a liar. Just because he's autistic does not mean that he's mentally retarded.